just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Shout out to Graven. Alright, so we got a little bit of Ravens talk uh, before the game today. Um, this is it. This is it. There ain't no more questions. There ain't no more talking about it. We're going to see what happens. Um, Mark Andrews, questionable going into the game. Bateman, questionable. Bateman should play because he's been practicing. Mark Andrews, he's one of those few players where they ain't practice all week, but... You know that he would still be I mean if he's healthy of course um, He would be still still Be one of them players that could still go out there And make something happen but At the same time it's like man it's, it's tough Because it is a long season as we know um, This is a short week Short turnaround and all that um, So I don't know So I, I guess the Ravens may be down a quarterback uh, If Mark Andrews doesn't play um, But Calais Campbell He's out for sure I know Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, they all questionable and whatnot. But, I mean, we'll see. We'll see who plays tonight. But anyway, a um, little bit of talk before the game came from my guy, Nazarene. Shout out to Nazarene. He said, what's up, fam? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. A little nervous about these Ravens tonight, but I'm still good. Uh, he said, I'm cool with myself at this moment. See, he knows what's coming. He knows how these Ravens be doing, and, and he knows they like stressing people out. But anyway, uh, he said, nevertheless, I be liking these discussions about the team. Hey, that's what it's about, man. I love it. I love it. And, and what I love the most is when people, they present all these different angles and stuff that I was never thinking about. That's why I love questions from subscribers so much, man. But anyway, he said, one thing I want to do is discuss this. EDC isn't doing nothing to help Lamar myth. Oh, okay. So he don't believe it. Let's see. While I do understand why people say that, I want to make sure I show ways that he has tried so far. I like to speak as the opposition sometimes to see if someone can convince me to take their position. Okay, I see what you're doing. Then. Um, he said, with that being said, EDC did try to help Lamar. But why would Nazarene say that, right? Oh, I like how you put yourself in a third person. Uh, he said, <laughs> simple, because if you remember correctly, instead of the... Oh, instead of us drafting Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuels, A.J. Brown, fans were dying to have him, McCole Hartman, Deontay Johnson, the Ravens drafted who Lamar wanted instead of grabbing who he needs. Uh, so that was uh, obviously talking about Hollywood Brown. So, yeah, Lamar asked for Hollywood Brown. Um, that's true. He got him in 2019. He asked for him, got him, boom. So, should the Ravens have been like, okay, hey, that's it. You're good now. You're set. You're straight. We gave you Hollywood. That's all you need, buddy. You already got Mark Andrews. You're set. Should that have been it? Should the Ravens have put everything on a rookie wide receiver that Lamar requested? Who was dealing with an injury, by the way? Liz Frank injury. Should the, should, is that, that's, I, I get it. They, that is by Lamar's request and he got what he asked for. But should they have been like, all right, we get you Hollywood, you're done. I mean, they drafted, they drafted with Boykin that same that same draft too, I believe. We saw how that went. But so should they should they have relied on two rookie receivers and Willie Sneed? I'm, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like, uh, that's it. But again, that was 2019. So again, 2019, I'm I'm cool with what happened in 2019. I'm cool with that because that was Lamar's, like, not his rookie year, but that was his his breaking out year. Like, oh, okay, this is who Lamar Jackson is. All right, we get it. So in 2020, that's when they should have really went in. But anyway, so 2019, what they did, all right, cool, no problem. He won MVP with it. All right, now really go in. But so uh, he said, then this past draft, EDC asked Lamar if he wanted wide receiver or an offensive line. Oh, see, this, this question right here, I mean, this statement. This well, Let me finish first So this past draft EDC asked Lamar If he wanted wide receiver Or offensive line He said offensive line Those sacks on Lamar Well okay First he about to talk about the sacks But before we get into that That part Look man I, I strongly dislike when people Use that And act like it has to be So black and white 
Like, if EDC asks Lamar, oh, you want wide receivers or you want offensive line? And Lamar said offensive line. Does that mean that EDC should only have gotten offensive line and only built up the offensive line and did nothing at the receiver position? It does not have to be all or nothing. It doesn't have to be this, this crazy extreme where it's like, all right, well, since Lamar has told EDC, oh, I want offensive line, then let's build up the offensive line and not do anything at receiver. That, that's pretty much what happened. They got Filele. Um, they got Linderbaum. Um, and those two have been big, like well, five lately, like literally big. But they uh, they got though they got Morgan Moses. Um, am I missing somebody? I don't think so. But so they they did build up the offense. The offense line is better than it was last year. Still got some improvements to make, but they are better than they were last year. Um, so that's a good thing. But that doesn't mean like all right, since Lamar said off offensive line, don't do anything in the receiver position. No, man. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. But anyway, he said those sacks on Lamar in that last game were all on the line. Uh, he's dropping back too far for the people who would try to crucify the line. Uh, I would say this, though. How about EDC and the coaches actually do what they need to do for him by scouting and stuff? Because Lamar does not scout or watch players in college, which is why he didn't even know who Bateman was. So that um, that's that has been a conversation that I've had with, with a few people. Uh, where they brought that up like, hey, the scouting has to be better. I know my guy JT brought it up. I know my guy Jamil brought it up. When they talked about the scouting has to be better for the Ravens. And it's true. Um, he said uh, Baltimore needs to do their job and Lamar should do his job, which is play quarterback. Your lane is your lane. And I hope and pray they aren't asking him what he wants to do. Just tell him we did everything you asked us to do. No, nah, y'all scout. He plays. It's that simple. I think they kind of tried to give him the keys to the city or team way too fast. I don't. I don't. By drafting Hollywood, and that's it. I, I don't. Uh, could be wrong, but yeah, do what's best for him, not what he wants, if you understand what I mean. I understand what you mean. Like a parent. Like you ask a kid what they want for dinner. Oh, I want ice cream. I want chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream the best kind. But I want chocolate ice cream for dinner. You as a parent, are you going to be like, okay, sure, we'll have chocolate ice cream for dinner? Some parents would, and hey, that's cool. But a lot of them will be like, no, let's let's have at least have some food first, and then have the chocolate ice cream later. So I see what you're saying uh, with the like as a parent, you need to do what's best for your child. The Ravens, as a team, as a franchise, need to do what's best for Lamar as a quarterback. Have they? Yeah, I'll let you answer that. But anyway, um, he said. Not many players know how to identify talent. No disrespect to Hollywood, but those receivers I named should have went ahead of him in the draft. Just saying, enjoy your week, fam. And let's go, Ravens. Next question came from my guy, Serge. He said, temperature check. What's up, Engraven? Hope you all enjoying your time in Tampa. Hopefully, the Ravens can make it better with a win. I hope so. I'm not like, not real sure about it, but... I hope so. Anyway, he said, at this point in the season, we are looking at a 4-3 and three record. Injuries are, once again, plaguing the team. The trade deadline is in less than a week. The bye week is in a little over two weeks away. Neither the defense nor the offense have had dominant performances yet. I just wanted to see how we're feeling about Gregory P. Roman at this point of the season. Greg Roman, a um, lot of the same stuff. It has not been all bad. Um, I, I don't want you to think it's been all bad because it hasn't been all bad. Um, but there's been a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of the same things just peeking their head out um so uh it's just it just seems like it's we talked about this i think two years ago how greg roman amazing introductory uh offensive coordinator for young quarterbacks great job he again excels in the run game so the run game can help a young quarterback get more comfortable as he goes put less pressure on him if you got a good run game uh, and then the passing is, is based off of efficiency, not volume, but efficiency. Um, so, but I, I think it's it's been time. Uh, but even again, if they move on from Greg Roman, whether during the season, after the season, okay, cool. But if the philosophy doesn't change, it's going to be a lot of the same old stuff. Um, he said, in my opinion, Lamar has been holding the ball too long because receivers are running poorly designed routes. But that's just my opinion. I've seen a lot of that too. There's a lot of that too, especially from the film guys, because uh, they've been breaking all that stuff down. Uh, then there, there's a lot of times when a bunch of receivers, they all together on the same part of the field in the same section. It's like, I know y'all are friends, but like, spread them out, man. Get them space. Social distance the receivers. Uh, and he said, fun facts. Jim Caldwell took over the offense with a 9-4 and record in early December. T. Martin's time as a coach at North Cobb High School overlapped with Darren Waller. 
uh, he was a tight end in a high school freshman at the time. Okay, I didn't know that. I appreciate these fun facts. He said, and Travis Hawkins, Ravens player personnel staff member and scout. Uh, oh, he was a sophomore in high school at the time. Okay, I appreciate that. Much love from the A. Team, keep it clean. Appreciate that, Search. Big Trust. Next question came from my guy, Mark. And the Big Trust had the question marks on the end of it. He said, what's up, Engraven? Oof, just watched a pregame video, and I felt the emotion in your voice, and you didn't sound very dejected. Uh, yeah, you didn't sound very dejected, and honestly, everything you said, I agree with 1,000. Now, is it bad that I low-key hope we lose in order for change to be made? I, I, I know what you're saying, and I get what you're saying. I know this is why a lot of people, like, last season... Um, they wanted the Ravens to just lose out. <laughs> the Ravens were like, hey, we got y'all. Um, I, I never want the Ravens to lose, but I understand what you're saying, but I never want them to lose simply because, I w and I know it's, it's harder, and it just, I know stuff doesn't usually happen like this to where a team is winning, and then they decide to make significant changes. Um, like the Eagles, for example. Eagles are what, 6-0 and right now? And they went and just traded for uh, Robert Quinn from the Bears. It's like, man, really? Like, y'all undefeated and y'all still adding more? Y'all already shown that y'all are all in and y'all still adding more? But anyway, um, he said, Team Keep It Clean feels what you're saying. Now, I want to touch on the offense. What would be the point in getting that guy if we don't spread the offense? Oh, excuse me. If we don't spread defenses out and get guys the ball. I see. I, again, I see what you're saying. But I do not think it would be wise to undercompensate the offense to undercompensate Lamar Jackson to even undercompensate Greg Roman with as far as a weapon standpoint just because he is Greg Roman if anything if you provide him with that guy then and that guy is still not excelling that guy's still not doing his thing then that would show you even more like hey oh these Ravens they got a philosophy issue they got a big problem in their offense if they even got that guy and he's still not making it happen oh some that would highlight the issues even more in my opinion. He said, we have pieces to succeed, but we have to use them. I agree with that. They have to use them. Bateman, Tylen, Isaiah, Devin, James are in prime position to get chances and produce, but we don't use these guys, and it hurts me to see guys work so hard to sit on the bench. Yeah, that's tough right there, man. Uh, where is the trust? Oh, it ain't none. It ain't none. Like, and it's like with, with, with Pro Shea, man, you feel for him because every time he's out there on the field, um, and he's not out there that much. Everything he does gets maximized that much more. I remember early in the season, I don't know if it was the first or second game, Prochet was out on, uh, out on the field. He got a holding call. I think it was on a screenplay. I'm not sure, but he got a holding call. Then this past week, he was out there on the field, and he on a screen to Pat Ricard. They got the first down, nice, well-designed screen. They got it, positive yards, first down, big chunk play, whatever. But then... Prochet end up getting into it with the uh, the Browns defender. I forgot who it was. Fifteen yard penalty on Prochet. So it's like, man, and you know, you know, Harbaugh don't forget that stuff. Especially if you're a bench player. Especially if you already not getting time, and you come out on a, on the field, and then you, yeah. So I would not be surprised if Prochet is inactive uh, in the game tonight. Uh, and he's, anyway, he said, get these guys the ball, man. You can't run short yardage plays on first, second, and third down. Why can't we go three wide? Cause man, I mean Ravens go three wide all the time. They put three receivers on the field all the time. They put if when he's healthy, they put Bateman out there. They put Duvernay, and they put Pat Ricard. So they go three wide all the time with their receivers. If I'm honest, bro, this really is just sad to send this question in because I can feel depletion coming out of Baltimore, and energy and excitement is not there. That's true. Uh, Deshaun may help, but I don't think it will if you have Deshaun and Patrick Hart as your targets. I really love Lamar, but I don't want his talents being wasted here like this. And I want to touch on this theory of setting up Lamar to fail and try to down his asking price. Mm. Mm. When Deshaun is active, and I think he will be tonight, um, I want to see thing, plays with Deshaun Jackson, Rashad Bateman, and Devin DuVernay, and Mark Andrews all on the field at the same time. All of them on the field at the same time, but we'll see. Uh, he said, they have to realize Lamar isn't Trent Dilfer, Joe Flacco, or Kyle Buller. He will leave, so no matter what you're losing, leverage, and I'm scared to say it, Baltimore has no leverage whatsoever, and Lamar may be gone. I'm sorry for the rant engraving, but enough is enough. You, Ravens Nation and team, keep it clean. Keep your heads up. Much love and blessings to you all. Stay safe and take nothing for granted. Uh, by the way, uh, your sarcastic southern accent keeps me weak. <laughs> 
Last question on this quick episode, just chatting it up before the game, uh, came from my guy Jay Fire. He said, head coach. Yo, what's up, Engraving? It's your boy Jay Fire here. Hope you and the fam are doing well. We're doing really good. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for what you do for Ravens Flock and for bringing joy to my day. Oh, no, I appreciate it, man. Uh, so I know you don't think any coaching changes will happen in the near future, but just humor me. Do you think that firing John Harbaugh and going for an Eric Bieniemy or an offensive type of head coach will be a good idea? I do think um, going for an offensive guy would be because you got this guy, this quarterback on your team that uh, he's kind of good. He's kind of good. And you got this current philosophy on your team that doesn't blend or mix with the kind of quarterback you got on your team. And you just you're, you're wasting time. You're wasting time and talent. So uh, you got a more offensive approach. I think that would be a good thing. And again, it does not mean the defense would be neglected. It would just mean you would have somebody that would specialize in offense a lot more than your current guys. And that could help the offense a lot more. Now, I was just talking to one of my guys, my guy Josh, about this a couple days ago. Um, I think that if they got a new head coach, I actually think that could increase the chance of Lamar staying. Um, but I think it would increase it to like 50-50. That, that's how I feel. Because I, 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 I am under 50% right now as far as Lamar being on a team next year. I want to be wrong. I really do. But I am under 50% on him being on a team next year uh, because of just, again, their philosophy, the way that they do things. Um, but I think if they, got, if they went in another direction... At head coach, I think that would raise it to 50-50. Reason being because there's a 50% chance that Lamar would be like, oh, I like this guy. 50% chance they'd be like, all right, no, I still want to move on. Um, but depending on who the guy is, who the coach is, and I don't want to hear none of that. Oh, the grass ain't always greener. No, you never. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know until you try. That whole, oh, the grass ain't always greener. Oh, you don't know what you. Should you just be scared then? Should you just play it safe and, and do what you've been doing and hope that something changes, even though it's been a lot of the same stuff? Well, I, I'll let you answer that for me. But anyway, um, that the, if they got a new coach, that could bring a new philosophy, especially with more a lot more emphasis, quality emphasis on the offense. Um, they may want to go one or two ways. They could be like, hey, we want Lamar to stay. We want him as our quarterback. Or they could be like, hey, you know what? Let's get the draft picks. We want to build our own empire up here. So it could go either way. Uh, as far as from Lamar wanting to stay or wanting to still leave. Or even the coach still wanting to retain Lamar or wanting to go in a different direction. So either way, I mean, this this next offseason is going to be a lot of risky business. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, he said, uh, do you think that, uh, oh, do you think firing John Harbaugh and going for Eric Bieniemy or offensive type of head coach would be a good idea so we just answered that one he said I think that could appeal to Lamar and bring change to maximize our offensive potential with a new scheme I love John Harbaugh as a man for sure John Harbaugh super cool so very very nice every single time we met John Harbaugh he's been super 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 nice super nice respectful he sit, he'll sit there and, and actually take the time to talk to you it'll be quick because you know like there's a million other people trying to talk to him but he, he's been very very nice um, but anyway, he said, I love John Harbaugh as a man, and we can't deny the level of consistency he has brought, but it feels like the magic has run out. Thanks for answering the question, and just like Taylor Swift's new album, I'm out. I like that. Not the album, but I like how you exited. Yeah.